Does your tired old painted metal garage door look like this? If it does, I'm going to show you how to make it look like this. Hi, I'm Tom, coming to you from the Don't Screw It Up World Headquarters and Workshop in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, I'm going to do a product demo and a review of this product, Everbright Clear Coating. This is a product manufactured in the United States from the Everbright company. That's Ever, B-R-I-T-E. That's the phonetic misspelling of bright. And this product is used to restore painted metal objects. I'm going to restore two painted metal garage doors. I have a single car garage door and a double car garage door. That's three when you add them all up. We're going to restore that today. This painted metal garage door is 12 years old from when the house was originally built. I'm the homeowner. I'm not affiliated with this company. I've never used this product before, and I'm doing this project at my own risk. If you follow my instructions, you're doing this project at your own risk as well. So before we get started, I'll tell you what I know about this product. This product is very expensive. I'm not even going to tell you the price because you need to be sitting down when you hear it. You can look it up on the internet. But when you think about how your wife spends $10 on a little bottle of nail polish, this is like a one gallon can of nail polish. This is a really heavy duty, high quality clear coat that will restore painted surfaces and protect them for many years. At least that's what the advertisements say. We're going to find out today. So when the company shipped this product to me, the can got pretty beat up in shipment. It was wrapped in bubble wrap, and this is how it looked when I took it out of the box. Um, you know, they shipped it from the West Coast where it's manufactured. I don't know if they shipped it by Pony Express or Covered Wagon, but it got pretty beat up in transit. I called the company, asked them for a fresh can to store it in. They didn't comply with my request. They said I could store it in any kind of metal can. So I got a couple of these small metal cans you can buy at your hardware store uh, where I can reduce this down if I don't use the full amount. This can still, you know, will hold the material, but I don't like to have a beat up can in my world headquarters as a don't screw it up corporation. So when you use this product, you might want to think that it's like polyurethane or uh, varnish or something like that. It's really not like that. It behaves a lot differently. I've done a lot of work with all kinds of sealers and things of that nature. This dries super quick. So you wanna have a good supply of applicators. You wanna try some different options, depending on the type of job that you're doing, uh, because I think different applicators work differently, you know, on different types of surfaces. You wanna use this product in a well-ventilated area, like outside, because these fumes are pretty strong. And you wanna do cleanup with a product called Xylene, which is a type of solvent that you can buy at many local hardware home improvement stores. Now a big part of this job, if you're restoring a faded, oxidized, painted metal garage door like I'm going to do here today, is you need to prepare the surface and get as much of that oxidation, that chalky material off the door as possible. Uh, it takes a little bit of work. The company sells a special cleaner and some special pads to do that. I would recommend looking into those. I did not know about that when I ordered this product, so I just kind of figured out how to do it on my own. Um, but it's tough to get all that oxidation off the door, so if they have a product and a process that helps do that, I would recommend that. Now let's talk about the coverage ratio, and I'm also going to give these measurements in meters and liters for the people in the 175 countries of the world that use the metric system, unlike the three countries in the world that don't, which is the one that I'm in. So a typical garage door is uh, roughly eight feet by seven feet. Mine, it happens to be eight feet by nine feet. I have an extra tall one. And then I have a double garage door that's 18 feet by seven feet. That's 72 square feet for my single door, 126 square feet for my double door. That's 6.7 square meters for the small one. 11.7 square meters for the large one. Now the manufacturer says that one quart of this, which is 32 ounces or roughly one liter, should cover 250 square feet with a single coat. 
250 square feet is 23.2 square meters. So that's the baseline that we're gonna be using here. One quart, 32 ounces, 250 square feet equals roughly one liter, 23.2 square meters. That's the typical coverage ratio. So another important part of this job is to figure out what kind of applicator you're gonna use. Now, the manufacturer recommends a lot of different options. So I recommend actually reading the manufacturer website because the applicator is really gonna make or break the job. That's an easy way to screw it up is to pick the wrong one. So they recommend a fine finished tip sprayer, a microfiber roller, a sponge brush or sponge applicator, or a clean white lint-free cloth pad. So I have a couple of these options that I'm gonna try here today. I have this lint-free pad that's kind of like a car wax applicator. I have this uh, smaller pad that's a little bit um, less absorbent. You can get in some real nooks and crannies with that one. I have some microfiber cloths that I'm gonna use. I have uh, these sponge brushes that I can use. I'm not gonna try a roller and I'm not gonna try a sprayer. Um, but I'm gonna try a couple of different options here and just see what goes on best. Now, when we do jobs around here, safety is the highest priority. So you wanna have safety glasses. You wanna protect your skin. You don't wanna have prolonged contact with this stuff on your skin. So they recommend using nitrile gloves instead of other types of gloves, which this product will eat through. You wanna use this in a well-ventilated area, like outdoors. The fumes from this are strong. I mean, they will, wow, go right to your head, let me tell you. Uh, make sure you have good ventilation. Take some breaks if you need them. And if you're using a sprayer to apply this, you absolutely want to use an approved mask for the type of sprayer and the type of product that you're using. Stay safe. There are a lot of ways to screw up a job. You can screw up a garage door, you can screw up your driveway, you can break a tool, whatever. But if you screw up your health, not good. We don't do that around here. Okay, let's go take a look at the job site. So I'll be doing two doors here today. This is the first one. I cleaned this one yesterday. I haven't cleaned that one yet. So I'm gonna move on and clean that one. Then I'll put the seal coat on both. The first thing I do is I use my pressure washer really just to rinse the door off and apply some soap to it and get the surface grime off of it. I don't actually use a pressure tip to try to clean the door. You can really damage certain surfaces using your pressure washer. I mean, unless you're pressure washing a concrete driveway or something, I've screwed up a lot of things around the house by trying to clean them with a pressure washer. So you wanna be real careful doing something like that. So I'm just using the soap applicator tip here. This is less than hose pressure. Then I switch to the 15 degree tip and I just do this from a safe distance to get that soap and any surface dirt off. So I use a couple different brushes for this job. I use this stiff bristle, bristle brush to start with. I have a soft bristle brush to go over it and make sure everything's smooth. And then I use the back side of one of these kitchen sponges if I really need to get in there. You just wanna make sure that you have a real uniform, clean look to the door before you put the seal on it. So now I'm ready to apply the product. I just did one panel as a test. What you wanna do first is figure out what applicator you wanna use. I tried first with one of these sponge brushes. I wasn't crazy about how this worked because it was dripping a lot of material down the door. So now I'm onto this bigger applicator pad. This is like something you'd use to apply car wax. You wanna have a lint-free pad. You wanna dip it in the product and you wanna just cover this in kind of long sweeping motions and try to get as much coverage in as few strokes as possible because this stuff will start to set up immediately. So you don't wanna be going back and doing multiple coats over the same area. You just wanna to try to hit this once, move on. So you just wanna go in big strokes 
and try to cover as much area one time and not do a lot of going back and touching up your work. Now it's possible to go back and do a second coat and they say in the instructions, this stuff's pretty forgiving. You know, you gotta believe them that if you miss an area, you can go back and touch it up. So I'm not trying to go crazy and do multiple coats. The other thing is, if you get drips in this, the drips will dry really quickly and you'll see them. So you wanna try to blend in any drips if, if you notice them as you go. You don't wanna even go back a few minutes later because this stuff sets up almost immediately. Okay, I just finished the first coat. I'm gonna let this dry for an hour. Definitely think I'm gonna give this a second coat. They recommend two coats on most applications. I mean, the first coat actually covered really beautifully, but I see a little streaking, little imperfections here and there. I think I could really smooth this out with one more coat, but you need to let this dry for at least an hour before doing the second coat on it. So now I'm gonna let this dry. Okay, for comparison, I just finished applying the product to the door on the left, and the door on the right has not been finished yet, but I just hosed that down. So that's the true wet look uh, of, of an unfinished door. Here's the finished look with one coat on it of the, of the door on the left. So you can see it's definitely dark, and it looks really close to the wet look, but it's not quite as dark and glossy as the true kind of wet look of the door. It's one shade lighter than that and slightly more matte. Okay, I just finished the first coat on this door. It looks pretty good. So let me tell you what I learned in my first application of this product. I've never used it before. Now, I've used a lot of different products, polyurethane, varnishes, all kinds of sealants. I've never quite dealt with anything quite like this. Uh, it's a incredibly tacky, very fast drying uh, coating and it gets really tacky real quickly. So you have to work pretty quickly with this and you gotta kind of plan ahead to make sure that you have all your supplies ready to go. And it dries so quickly that you really can't go back and touch things up when it's in that semi dry state. You either have to get it when it's wet or let it fully dry and then go back and do a second coat or a second touch up on it. So it's a little tricky to work with. You definitely don't want to apply it on uh, a hot metal door because it will dry on contact, I believe, because it dries so quickly even in the shade here. The second thing is you have to pick a good applicator. I already went through a couple different options. First, I used this little thin applicator. I didn't like this because it didn't absorb enough of the product. Then I went to the sponge uh, brush, which is also another recommended applicator. Wasn't crazy about this because it dripped too much. Every time I touched the door, I was getting drips down the door. And the third one I tried was this sponge applicator that's more like a car wax applicator, but this is not 100% lint free. And this product is so tacky that it was pulling little microscopic fibers off of this. So when it says you have to use a lint free applicator, that really means 100% lint free. So what I ended up with was this microfiber towel. And you can see as I was working with this, the stuff dries, you know, solid. So you have to keep using uh, fresh parts of the towel as you go. So if you're going to use something like this, get enough of them to make it because you can't go back and reuse the same applicator. I found that those things are solid as a rock right now. It's been 30 minutes since they touched the product. Uh, so whatever applicator you use, you got to have enough of them to get through the job. So in terms of the application rate, I poured a quart of this into this small can so I could see how much I was using. I used exactly half of that on this door. So I used about 16 ounces to do the first coat on this door. And then lastly, for this job, you definitely want to glove up. You want to make sure your hands are protected from this stuff. Otherwise, your friends are going to think you went and got a manicure. So that stuff looks like a clear coat. So now I'm about ready to start the second door. I'm gonna move the camera over there and I'll talk through this as I'm applying it and show you the other lessons that I learned as I'm doing the application. Here's the towel I used for the first door. This is a goner, I mean, this won't absorb anything. So I cut off the second half of it. It's still pretty good. I can get about halfway through this door with this one. Now, as you're applying this product, now this is the trick, what you need to do is you want to think about putting it on pretty wet, but 
you don't want it to drip down the door because it started to drip down the other door. Those drips start to dry immediately. By the time I got down the door just a few minutes later, I could actually see those drips. So uh, you want to load up your, your, your applicator to make sure that you have enough to get good coverage on there without needing to really rub it in. So you want to have a smooth uh, motion, but you don't want it to drip down the door. So you got to find that sweet spot right in between. So I load it up. And I got little nooks and crannies here around the frame. So what I was doing is I go around and kind of fill in that little groove in the frame first, constantly looking for drips. So as I see drips, you wanna wipe those off because they set up real quick. Then, just like when you're painting, think about your brush strokes because you'll actually see some of this product if you don't put it on super thin you'll actually see the direction that you applied it in. So because the, I have this little um, you know, wood grain finish in here, I'm trying to go with the grain as much as possible. Okay, so I got coverage on this one panel. You don't wanna go over it a lot because you'll start to build up two coats and then it'll look uneven. So you really just want one coat of coverage on this and then just move on. You can come back and do a second coat later. So as I finish this up, I'm just looking for any imperfections here and just trying to smooth those out a little bit without doing a full second coat. I'm just smoothing because this stuff's getting really tacky already. So if you've ever worked with varnish or polyurethane, you start touching it after it sets up, you actually make it worse. Same thing happens with this, even quicker. So I'm just looking for drips and drops, clean them up. That looks pretty good, moving on. Now I did just get a few drips down the door. By the time I get down here, this is gonna be set up. So I gotta watch for these drips and then I just gotta try to rub those in. So that I can go over that with a smooth coat when I get down there. You really wanna avoid the drips as much as possible because now I'm putting another wet coat over this dry coat by the time I get to it. So try to avoid the drips. That's really the way to screw up this job is to get a lot of drips around here. Okay, I just finished the second panel and I just did what I told you not to do. I keep going over it and messing with it. You just gotta get one coat on and keep going. Third panel's done. I did a little less fussing and fiddling with that one, so I'm getting better at this. Fourth panel's done. You really wanna think about this like you're doing a paint job. You wanna be aware of the brush strokes and what you're doing with the rag. You don't, you don't wanna Kind of rub this in in circles. I'm, I'm finding this to go on more effectively in kind of long strokes. And then you're thinking, is he actually going to tell us how every panel is going for all 48 of these panels? I don't think so. Now I got to panel number seven. It's not going on quite as smoothly. Something's going wrong here. I'm trying to figure out what it is. My applicator has gone to hell. I mean, this stuff dries so quickly that the part that I was just using a few minutes ago is already hard and dried up. So I got to rotate this, this uh, rag to a different fresh part of the rag so I get it to absorb some more of the product. So the first row is done. Now I go back and quickly check my work because you don't have a lot of time if you let this stuff set up. If you want to correct anything, drips, drabs, whatever, now's the time. So pause, walk your uh, length of your garage door up and down. Don't overdo it though, because you're going to do a second coat tomorrow. So you're not trying to apply a second coat now. You're just looking for real imperfections, which are drips or misses. So when I stepped back to try to see the forest for the trees, I could see when my applicator got a little wonky here on panel number seven, I missed a few spots here and started to thin out until I rotated this rag over and started to load up my applicator with the proper amount of the product. My applicator is on its last legs. I might be able to get a half of the next row by folding that over. My glove is completely shot. I don't know if this material eats through the gloves or not, but I have been going through about one glove through every row. Now the product uh, instructions indicate that you wanna be working in a well ventilated area. I'm working outdoors and I can tell you this stuff's pretty strong. 
you definitely want to work in a well ventilated area and keep this stuff locked up in a safe place when you're not using it <clears throat> now here you can see i missed one of my drips i wasn't paying attention so when i come back to this on the second row this is already set up look i'm rubbing that with my uh, rubber glove it's completely dry so now at this point if i don't want that drip to show through i gotta really try to rub that out with this product So I got rid of that drip. Here's another one. You know, before that sets up 100%, you have a little chance to maybe rub that out. But now I'm creating another potential spot, so I gotta keep moving. I gotta keep going. I gotta really move. Now I got hasty and I just dripped all the way down the door. The drips are really the way to screw this job up. Uh, you got to just load this thing up perfectly where you got just enough material on it to give you a smooth motion, but not so much that it's dripping. That's really the trick to this job. So I'm done with row two. This is the halfway point to the first coat. And I would say what I'm learning here is it's all about applicator absorbency. You gotta get the right amount of product on the applicator and it goes on real smooth. Your applicator starts to, to firm up, starts to dry out, you gotta turn it over or I start pressing harder and actually push some lint out of this thing. Just gotta keep turning the applicator over, get the right amount of product on the door. Another glove is shot. Moving on to glove number three on that hand. I'm also gonna open the garage door now and move this row number three up to a little more comfortable working level. <clears throat> so I just finished up the fourth row. So this door has the first coat on it. I used about 20 ounces of product on this. I'm definitely gonna do a second coat on this. It went on okay, but I see some imperfections here. Some of these glossy spots that need to be evened out. Um, so I'm gonna let these dry until tomorrow. The manufacturer recommends letting it dry to the touch. I mean, that, that top row is pretty dry, uh, which is at least an hour. Um, I'm gonna let these go till tomorrow, put a second coat on and see how they come out. But I'm pretty happy with where they are so far. Okay, it's day two. I'm doing the second coat on this door. I got about an hour before the sun hits my garage and really heats this up. So I think I can get this one done. So this looks pretty good looking at it, how it, it uh, dried overnight. I mean, it was pretty dry right when I finished it. You can see a, a few glossy patches. You can see a few turnaround areas. I really didn't miss any spots here. So what I'm really trying to do with the second coat is just get one more consistent layer on here for durability and to maybe cover up a little bit of these little um, imperfections. Now, as you put this second coat on, a couple things that you want to remember is you don't want to rub this on or it'll really start to reactivate the first coat. So you just want to do that gliding motion, load up your applicator, gliding motion straight across, don't do a lot of rubbing. Um, you also want to try to keep this material off of this weather stripping because it'll start to eat through this. Um, so I wasn't as careful about that yesterday as I'm going to be today. And like yesterday, I'm using a microfiber cloth as my applicator. I'm going to see how this goes today. Before I start, I noticed there's a little bit of lint on here from yesterday's uh, applicator. So I'm just going to brush the whole thing off with this light brush. You could use a little stiffer brush if you want, but nothing that's going to mar the finish. Okay, I just did that first panel, and I'm not happy with how that was going on with this uh, microfiber rag applicator. It's immediately getting really tacky and grippy on that first coat. And I feel like I'm not getting a real smooth glide across it. Um, and it's gonna reactivate that undercoat as I use this, this applicator. So I'm not gonna use this. So I'm I went to plan B on the second panel. I'm using a natural bristle brush, which is also an approved applicator. This works much better, getting a much more consistent, very thin layer using the brush on it. Um, so I'm definitely going to proceed with this because uh, I really don't want to see 
brush strokes or swirls or anything like that. So I'm treating this like a fine finished paint job and I got to use the right tool for it. It actually goes on real nicely with this. Probably should have tried this yesterday. Okay, row one is done. I'm real happy with how this is going on with this brush. I don't know how long this brush is going to stay soft because this stuff, you know, like I said, just dries instantly. So I'm hoping I can get through at least this door with this brush because this is the only one I have. I'm going to have to go out and probably buy another one for the second door. But I really like how this is working. Much better control than I was getting yesterday. Real consistent, even uh, layer. And I'm really able to control, you know, the direction of the brush strokes uh, on this, this slightly textured finish. So this is my new favorite applicator. So row two went on real quick, lickety split, real nice and smooth. So I'm kicking myself thinking, why didn't I use a paintbrush yesterday? So I looked at the can, because on the can, it doesn't say you can use a natural bristle paintbrush. It talks about all the other methods, but on the website for this product, it does say you can use a natural bristle brush. So note to the company, natural bristle brush, put it on here. It's the best applicator. Okay, the second coat is on. I'm real happy with how that looks. I love using that natural bristle brush to put on a real consistent, smooth finish. The amount of product that I used on that second coat was not significantly less than the first coat. This door is a little taller than normal. Uh, so if I had, you know, a boat or an RV, which I don't, that's the garage I keep them in. Okay, that door is nine by eight. That's 72 square feet. I put two coats on, that's 144 square feet. That product's supposed to give you about 250 square feet of coverage per quart. And I used about, I don't know, 75% of a quart, I would say. So I'm in the ballpark. I probably went on a little heavier than what the uh, manufacturer called for the coverage of that. I don't think I could have gotten 250 square feet of coverage out of that, that quart on this door if the door were bigger. Maybe call it 200, 210 is about what I would have gotten. So pretty close to the manufacturer's recommendation. And now the sun's starting to hit that door, but you can see the difference between two coats and one coat. It's a much deeper, darker finish on the second coat. It's not quite dry yet, but I don't think it's gonna dry up a lot differently than how that looks right now. So I got a lot of that deeper color. This one still has a little bit of that faded look to it. So when we get the full two coats on, on that door, I think this is gonna look real good. And when I opened that door this morning, it was pretty much adhered to that weather stripping on the side because uh, I got a little bit of the material behind there. thought I was doing a thorough job, but it really stuck to that weather stripping. So I'm going to let this dry in the open position just to pull it a little bit away from that weather stripping. That would be a smart thing to do. So we're on the home stretch. I'm going to do the second coat on door number two now. Just looking at door number one. I'm really happy with how this came out. I mean, it came out better than I expected. I got a few drip marks here and there down towards the bottom. I got a little lackadaisical on that last row. Got to pay a little closer attention on this other door to watch for those drips. But this door looks really good. I'll come back and assess everything at the end. I was worried about letting this brush sit all day that this was going to firm up and be unusable. The manufacturer recommended wrapping this in aluminum foil when you take breaks or possibly overnight, which I did. It actually worked. I mean, this thing actually stayed pretty soft. So I'm going to keep using this brush. So the same drill as yesterday. You want to basically load the brush up with as much product as it can carry without dripping. That's really the key. You get it loaded up, you get that good, long, gliding coverage. That's the key to a good finish. That long glide. Here we go again. Watch this right here. That's it. So I finished the top row. Maybe I'm being a little picky, but I need a new brush. This thing is just a little firmer than it was this morning. I'm just not getting the same feel as I was. So I broke out a fresh brush. This job is all about the applicator. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're going to do this job and you're going to spend the money on the product, you're going to spend the time to do it. Don't be chintzy on the applicator. Use a couple brushes, use a couple pads. I mean, this makes all the difference in the world.
So I'm on the last row here. I've uh, been at this for about an hour. I'll finish this up here shortly. Just a couple reminders. Go back and check your work as you're moving along. I do this panel. I move on to this panel. By the time I finish this one and I see a little drip on this corner, it's already setting up. So you got to really pay attention once you finish up this prior piece of work. Just glance back at that and make sure that it's not dripping because those drips set up really quickly. So let me give you a couple tips while they're fresh in my mind about how to do the job. Number one, make sure you spend the time to clean the door. I probably could have done a better job getting more of that chalky uh, residue oxidation off of the door. Really spend the time to get as much of that off as possible. The second tip is get a number of different applicators, try different ones and get the one that works the best. Each job is probably real finicky uh, and specific to a certain type of applicator that's going to work best. And then when you figure out which, which one is going to work best, change it out frequently because that applicator will start to set up, the material will start to harden on it, and you just start to lose your ability to get a smooth spread of the product. The third thing is go back and check your work as you're going. Like I said, you move from one panel to the next. By the time I finish the second panel, if there is a drip in this corner, it's already set up and it's really tough to blend that in. And the drip marks are really the easiest way to screw up this job because they're real visible. It's easy, you know, for it to happen, particularly on this type of door with all these uh, insets and things of that nature. So really keep an eye on, uh, on your work as you're moving along to make sure that it's not dripping as you move past it. It's very tough to go back and fix those. Next thing is put on a thin coat and keep moving. Don't overwork this product. If you really start fussing and fiddling with it and trying to perfect every little thing as you go, you're actually making it worse, particularly on the second coat, because the second coat can reactivate that first coat and you'll lose that layering that you want. So just try to get one smooth layer on, move on. You can always come back and do a second coat. You can do a third coat but try to avoid the temptation to go back and do a lot of touch-up work. So before you start this job, I would say consult the manufacturer's website, consult their instructions, and they have some videos as well. I mean, I'm just a guy, what do I know? I'm trying to do this job to show you how this is for a beginner, but you should also consult with the experts because they can probably tell you a thing or two how to do this. Next thing is always be safe when you're doing this job. Safety glasses, I had a couple splatters come up that could have gotten in my eye, that could have really ruined my day. Uh, wear gloves, you don't want this to have prolonged contact with this material on your skin. And always work in a well ventilated area, the fumes from that stuff are strong. And especially if you're using a sprayer, you absolutely have to wear an appropriate mask if you're using the sprayer application method. And lastly, if you don't have experience working with polyurethane finishes or varnishes or fine furniture finishes or even just doing a lot of big paint jobs. This probably isn't the type of job that you want to learn how to do that on. This product is pretty tricky to work with because it is so tacky and it sets up so quickly. I mean I've done a lot of work over the years with polyurethane and varnish and painting and I was using a lot of my skills to not screw up this job. So I might've made this look kind of easy, but if you've never done anything like this, you don't wanna test it out on a job of this size for the cost of the product, the cost of the door that you're working with, you know, trying to learn something like this on the fly, I wouldn't recommend it. I would seek out a professional to do this job. I think you'd be a lot happier with the results. And this is not a massively labor intensive job for the quality of the work that you get when it's done. I mean, this looks like the door, you know, has been replaced essentially. Those are my tips for how to do the job and not screw it up. Now let's talk about how the product looks. So here's the finished version of door number one. I put the second coat on this this morning. This has had all day to set up. This looks fantastic. I mean, if I had been out of town and my wife hired somebody to do this job the way that I just did it, and I pulled in the driveway, I literally would have thought she ordered a new door from the manufacturer. If I got out of the car then and looked up close, I can kind of tell that this isn't a factory 
finish. There's just minor imperfections here and there. But then once I realized somebody actually restored this door, if I had to critique the work, I would say, whoever did this work did a fantastic job. I'd give them a five out of five on a performance rating scale, and I'd probably give them a performance bonus for the quality of work that they did. This thing looks amazing. I mean, it, it literally almost looks like a factory finish. The product far exceeded my expectations. I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, these doors were in such bad shape. I thought, you know, anything will be better than what I had. There's no way I ever anticipated they would come back this close to the original factory finish. So again, I give five out of five stars for this product, the Everbright Clear Coat product. So that's it from Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks for selecting my video. I hope you found it helpful. Good luck on your next project and don't screw it up.